So I'm uh, happy to present uh, the MindLogger data collection platform and app and, and share some insights that I gained uh, to facilitate the transition from closed scientific inquiries to more open models as I did my thesis in the context of both um, mental health and digital frameworks. Okay, so digital tools provide the opportunity to overcome pencil and paper data collection constraints for convenient and frequent data collection in real uh, time and in natural environments. So one story I really liked was uh, when a person with Parkinson's disease spent, spends only one hour in the whole year with her doctor and the rest of the 8,000 hours in self-care. So this prompted her to create her own app to track her symptoms. And who can know the child better than the parents and caregivers who are constantly observing, analyzing and responding to find solutions? So can parents use their smartphones to make a difference? So from the researcher's point of view, results from already published studies can be replicated, optimized and built upon. Collecting data from larger and more diverse sample sizes towards generalizability or the transferability of results across places and cultures. So good ideas, approaches and data should be sourced from everywhere, including Southeast Asia, Africa and Latin America, if we have to progress in mental health. So what is MindLogger? In a nutshell, with MindLogger, anyone without knowing how to program or design can build their own apps with questionnaires, digital diaries, quizzes, and cognitive tasks to collect and share data and, and observations on research, citizen science, and community science projects, and possibly gain insights from the data with others. So MindLogger is freely available. It's open source, it's cross-platform. And importantly, you can collect data not only by text, but by audio, video, images, drawing, GPS, etc. I'm going to skip through this, but very quickly, one thing that could interest global health students is a mental health database that we are building, which tries to connect symptoms from all disorders to questionnaires. So we have over 5,000 questions from 150 mental health questionnaires to different technologies, community initiatives. And we do have games as well, where one future goal is to try and map game mechanics to different behaviors. And uh, I, I will go through this very quickly, but you may think, ah, all of this sounds familiar. Yes, so we are, uh, for a paper that we are just releasing, we analyzed 300 plus projects similar to MindLogger that, that does, uh, you know, in part what we are trying to do. And only 10 projects met our primary requirements. Only four use end-to-end -end encryption. Two really protects access to users' data and only one is open source. So, you know, there, while there is a lot of quantity, one can download over 10,000 smartphone applications from the App Store and Play Store. The quality, the actual use, the scientific validity, well, that's a different story. So here's a bird's eye view of different uh, mind logger features. So survey features include, you know, radio buttons, slider bars, creating tables, text-based entries, and sensor features include, you know, recording audio, video, photos, geolocation. So it's important to note that with the mind logger system, anybody can create questions like an image question but also respond to different questions with these different features. And just zooming in into three features, you have the slider bar here and you know the radio and uh, multi-select. So for example, how was your child's day? Anybody can change this question as what did you eat? Is it an apple or a banana or stuff like this? So it's, it's, it's very configurable. And so where, where can MindLogger be used? So MindLogger is a tool designed for its practical application. And it's, it's designed to also suit existing psychiatric systems. So right now we are uniquely positioned to test and deploy MindLogger in the Child Mind Institute's clinic and the Healthy Brain Network project. But for the want of time, 
I'm going to go quickly to the two use cases that I'm currently working on. So first, we are collaborating with schools to administer assessments in MindLogger to better understand students' strengths and needs, and to also link this learner's profile to relevant interventions and adaptive support strategies. So these adaptive support strategies include, cl include classroom accommodations, what emotional support to give, what kind of assistive technologies you can use, et cetera. And the second is an autism digital diary where users can not only track specific symptoms and daily events like eating, sleeping, mood, physical activity, but also share what they find is rewarding and challenging on a daily basis. And one of my goals in ETH Zurich is to repurpose MindLogger as a citizen science and community science logger, where we try and meet the United Nations sustainable development goals, including health. So two sub narratives in this that could uh, interest today's audience. So the first is, we are trying to reinvent libraries as centers for citizen science and the sustainable development goals. And secondly, we have a program for students to work on, students to learn by doing research projects with local communities as part of their curriculum, empowered by digital tools like MindLogger where they can build questionnaires and collect data. So we are currently collaborating with the master's program in the University of Paris, where students can you know, build their own projects and test out our tools, et cetera. And I would be very happy to reach out and work. So I've, I've, I've cut down this presentation really short, but I did hear a couple of students wanting to do post uh, podcasts. So I just wanted to share a few things that you may find interesting that is related to MindLogger. Yeah, so one is crisis logger, specifically for mental health to probe, you know, mental health during this pandemic. So you can share your thoughts. You know, first, yeah, who are you? Are you a parent or a teacher or a student, etc.? So let's say that I'm a student. So it's, it's a very simple system where you can share your thoughts on mental health by a video or audio or text, but you can also explore other people's responses, where we are collaborating with Google actually to create this bird cloud of uh, you know, different people's responses. So this is one thing. And the other thing that could interest you all from the Child Mind Institute is the My Younger Self campaign. So different celebrities, you know, uh, from, from Hollywood and people like Michael Phelps. So they answer in one and a half minutes, their uh, their struggles and experiences with mental health and what they would tell their younger self, basically. So these are a few examples of what we could work on. And I also uh, did hear that somebody is working on air pollution. So one example of, you know, how citizen science can sort of unite communities with social issues, with scientists, with technology is, I think in, in a town in Poland, a group of 15 to 20, participants came to a library where with researchers, they built their own DIY pollution sensors for like, you know, something like five euros or something like this. And then they go home, they all collect data through these sensors that they made. And then they, re, they reconvene in the libraries, you know, to discuss, uh, to, to analyze the data together with experts and discuss how it can affect the policy of how it can, you know, uh, bring about change in the policies of the town and, and whatnot. So I will stop here. And uh, well, yeah, this was a, a very quick overview of the project we are doing. And uh, well, I'm happy to take any questions and you can contact me by email. And as I said, we do explore at this stage, a lot of collaboration with uh, students because we are at the stage of wanting to build different use cases and something for you, Fabio, Ubisoft is actually collaborating with us on the project, specifically to you know gamify a bit more the cognitive tasks and help with uh, you know having these game-like mental health segments where we can, which is obviously uh, going to be a more interesting and engaging option compared to people answering questionnaires on paper in the clinic. 
So I end here and yes. uh, well, happy to take any questions, comments and